Hello and welcome to our in-depth discussion on breast cancer disparities among underserved women in the United States and some of our local strategies to mitigate them. I am Dr. Barso Özcan, a research fellow at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, and I'm joined by Dr. Jessica Poremka, a breast radiologist and the Vice Chair of Strategy and Quality at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. Today, we will discuss our recent radiographics article, Breast Cancer Disparity and Outcomes in Underserved Women, where we will dissect the crucial statistics and the underlying factors contributing to disparities and explore potential strategies to address these gaps effectively. Breast cancer accounts for one-third of all new cancer cases among women in the United States. While the mortality rate has decreased by 42% since 1989 due to enhanced screening and treatment, not all groups have benefited equally. Certain populations of women in the United States face disparities in breast cancer outcomes, including more advanced stage at diagnosis and increased mortality rates. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Ostrin. Yes, several factors contribute to the disparities in the breast cancer outcomes that we see in the U.S. Low income, low education levels, and inadequate health literacy are a few factors. Also, being uninsured or underinsured, race and ethnicity, and living in rural areas can contribute to creating vulnerable or at-risk populations. These at-risk populations are collectively termed underserved. The social determinants of health comprise of socioeconomic factors including income, insurance status, education, health behaviors, physical environment, and housing are all pivotal in shaping health outcomes, especially for underserved populations. Absolutely. It's crucial to mm-hmm. note that social determinants of health can influence up to 80% of health outcomes. Yes, so a multidisciplinary approach with care coordination and community outreach can mitigate the effects of poor social determinants of health on breast cancer outcomes disparities. Safety net healthcare systems play an essential role in mitigating the health disparities that these patients often experience. Diving deeper into racial and ethnic disparities is particularly concerning that while black women have a 5.8% lower incidence of breast cancer, they have a 40.7% higher breast cancer mortality rate than non-Hispanic white women. Black women are also more often diagnosed with hormone receptor negative breast cancers, which are more aggressive. In addition, black women have higher rates of regionally advanced disease and are diagnosed at later stage than their white counterparts. The mortality rate among young black women is disproportionately high, and this disparity is more pronounced in those under the age of 50. For example, black women 50 years and younger have mortality rates between 1.9 to 2.6 times higher compared to non-Hispanic white women. Additionally, black women are significantly more likely to have higher risk recurrence scores for early stage hormone receptor positive breast cancer at 17.7% compared with 13.7% for non-Hispanic white women. These disparities affect their treatment efficacy and outcomes. And the disparities exist beyond just incidence and mortality rates. Although harmful genetic variants, including Uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations occur more frequently in black and Hispanic patients with breast cancer compared to non-Hispanic white women. Access to genetic testing and the frequency of genetic testing among black and Hispanic women have historically been lower. Also, minoritized women and women with poor social determinants of health have less access to and utilization of tomosynthesis. In addition, black and Hispanic women are less likely to have supplemental screening breast ultrasound ordered and completed, even after adjusting for insurance status. These disparities can hamper early detection and effective treatment plans. For women in rural areas, they are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer at a later stage due to the lack of healthcare infrastructure present in urban centers, meaning there's less access to screening and specialist care. The distance to treatment centers and the lack of local healthcare options result in this delay. One effective strategy to overcome these barriers is the implementation of mobile mammography units. These units are key in increasing access to screening, especially in areas where healthcare facilities are sparse or non-existent. By bringing screening services directly to these communities, we can significantly reduce the time to diagnosis and treatment. Another issue is that there is a traveling trend in follow-up care. Delays in treatment as short as 30 days affect breast cancer prognosis. And Hispanic and Black women are more likely to experience delays in follow-up imaging after abnormal screenings with Hispanic women having a 21.4% chance of facing follow-up delays over 60 days, compared to 17.4% for non-Hispanic white women. These delays can be critical in terms of treatment effectiveness and survival rates. 
post-screening care coordination and patient navigation services are essential to ensure that women, especially from minoritized and underserved populations, receive timely and appropriate follow-up care. Navigators and care coordinators can guide patients through the often complex healthcare system, ensuring they receive timely follow-up care and treatment. Yes, and navigators can also help address barriers such as transportation, childcare, or even language barriers so that patients are able to attend these appointments, whether through transportation services or flexible scheduling. By addressing these, we ensure that once a woman is screened, she continues along the care pathway without delays. Moreover, navigators take a proactive approach to enhancing follow-up care. They engage with patients through educational programs and workshops, ensuring that patients are well-informed and actively involved in their healthcare journey. In addition to navigators that work in our hospitals, community health workers who are lay health workers that live in these communities can also help patients navigate complex health care systems. Absolutely, education is power. For instance, mobile mammography units not only provide screening services, but also serve as an educational hub where women can learn about breast health, the importance of early detection, and when to seek help for symptoms they're experiencing. Right, and as you know, in an effort to boost community health literacy, one of our mammography technologists earned an educational certificate and launched the Breast Health Education Roadshow. This initiative educates women at primary care clinics, health fairs, and outreach events about breast cancer screening and general breast health. Women are encouraged to leave their contact details, allowing our radiology schedulers to follow up and arrange screening mammograms. Since the program's inception in 2021, more than 50% of women who provided their contact information to be scheduled for a screening mammogram at the Breast Health Education Roadshow have actually completed their mammograms. Initially, this roadshow was held at six primary care clinics and has now expanded 12 clinics in 2022. This program also travels to local businesses to educate women. So another key strategy is building strong community partnerships between breast imaging services and practices and community organizations. These partnerships can create trusted links between healthcare providers and community members, improving community engagement and ensuring that services are tailored to meet the community's unique needs. These partnerships can also facilitate a better understanding of the cultural and social dynamics of different communities, which is crucial for effective communication and education about breast cancer. This can also help LGBTQI individuals who face their own unique challenges in the healthcare system, including discrimination and lack of access to culturally competent care. That's right. So transgender individuals, for example, may not seek regular screening due to fear of discrimination or they might be less likely to have access to healthcare providers who understand their specific needs. This can delay diagnoses and lead to worse outcomes. Additionally, advocacy and policy change are critical. We need policies that ensure all women, regardless of their socioeconomic status or ba racial background, have access to high quality breast cancer screening and treatment. This includes advocating for insurance coverage for advanced supplemental screening methods and treatments, as well as funding for breast cancer research that focuses on underserved populations. We encourage all stakeholders, from healthcare professionals to policymakers and community leaders, consider these strategies in their efforts to combat breast cancer disparities. Absolutely. And furthermore, it's essential that programs have multidisciplinary collaboration with key stakeholders, including patient and family advocates. Involving patient and family advocates can help design successful patient-centered strategies. Also, all programs should have defined goals and performance metrics to demonstrate their effectiveness. Employing dashboards and regular monitoring of metrics are an effective strategy in this regard. Indeed, monitoring both patient progress and program objectives is crucial. As Dr. Poranka pointed out, our goal today was not just to outline the problems, but to spark a conversation about actionable solutions. I would like to mention that the article also contains multiple excellent imaging case examples and graphs, which I highly recommend the audience to review. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have enjoyed this summary of our article, Breast Cancer Disparity and Outcomes in Underserved Women. Thank you to my mentor and senior author of our paper, Dr. Jessica Poremka, for joining me today and our wonderful co-authors from UT Southwestern Radiology to make this very important radiographics article a reality. <music>